This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer a question about whether we're about to see a government full node attack on Bitcoin. The basic question is this, and I've been getting it a lot lately, what is there to stop central banks or foreign governments or other bad actors from running 51% of the full nodes on the Bitcoin network in order to vote on changes that would be bad for the Bitcoin network? So if, for example, there are about 12,730 full nodes today, a bad actor might need to just set up one more than that, 12,731 nodes, in order to have the majority and win. And what makes this very easy to do is the fact that setting up a full node is very inexpensive. You can use an, uh, an old laptop, you can use a Raspberry Pi, and then you just download the Bitcoin Core software on that. So it looks like this could be really easy for a bad actor to pull off. Now, we need to distinguish between the nodes and the miners. The full nodes run the Bitcoin Core software. They're spread all over the world here, as we can see on this map. And each Bitcoin full node runs a version of Bitcoin Core and also has a full copy of the blockchain and all the blocks and transactions since the original Genesis block of 2000. Nine that Satoshi mined. So this is a software that they run. Anyone can download it. You could do this yourself. You could buy 13,000 laptops if you had enough money or 13,000 Raspberry Pis, download the software, maybe modify it and do a hostile attack. But I'm going to show you how this is impossible to do for a very simple reason. But it's important to distinguish between the full nodes and the Bitcoin miners. We're not talking about a 51% mining attack. I've covered that in other videos, but this would be a 51% full node attack. Now, as we said, full nodes run some version of Bitcoin Core software. There are different versions, uh, but all of them are backwards compatible. If you don't upgrade as a full node, you may lose out on some capabilities, but you're still able to talk to the other nodes. These full nodes, they run this core software, as we said, and they verify, or the software verifies, that the consensus rules, the general rules about Bitcoin, are being followed for every block and every transaction included in every block. So these consensus rules include the, the supply cap of 21 million. They also include rules like you can't spend the same Bitcoin twice, the double spending rule, etc. And also they include the rule that if you're a miner, you have to follow a certain protocol and come up with the, the, correct, um, the correct magic number in order to earn the block reward, things like that. Now, those are full nodes that run the Bitcoin core software. Bitcoin miners are the ones that actually package up the transactions. They create a new block, they burn a lot of electricity, and then they get to stamp that block as theirs if they're the first to find the special number. Now, they do this in a way that it's impossible to cheat. You actually have to run a lot of calculations to try to find this number, to try to guess this number. This burns a lot of electricity, which is what proof of work is. Now, if miners create a bad block, and by bad block, we mean just a block that does not follow the consensus rules, this block will be rejected by the full nodes, by the network, and that particular miner will have wasted his time and money in terms of both the cost of the equipment and the constant depreciation associated with it, as well as the electricity costs. Now, that rejected bad block will also not be added to the blockchain because it, it fails to follow the consensus rules. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also share this video with a few friends who are into Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Once you understand Bitcoin at a really deep level, it really does give you superpowers. Now, it's very important to point out the Bitcoin network, in other words, looking at these full nodes, it is not a democracy. It's simply a group of people and who run computers. So it's a social consensus. It's a computer consensus. It's people who like the current Bitcoin rules enough to run a full node to set one up. So it's usually people who own Bitcoin and are Bitcoiners. Now you can modify these rules. You can just go here. You can download the software. If you're good at programming, you can tweak it and then you have your own version. And you can change the rules, but then you no longer have Bitcoin. And I think a great analogy for this is chess versus fairy chess. Fairy chess is just a different version of chess. Uh, and there are obviously infinite versions of this where the rules have been slightly changed. And this can create some really interesting intellectual problems 
and uh, you can create a version of chess that looks like this, three-player chess. But again, then you're you're playing a completely different game. You could modify the rules of chess so much that you actually end up with something like checkers. You get rid of uh, you get rid of the pawns and the king and the queen and the rooks, etc. Replace them with this, and you can call this chess. But it really is a different game. Likewise, if you're running a different version of the Bitcoin Core software, the full notes that are running Bitcoin Core and all the backwards compatible versions will not talk with you. If you're running completely different software or even a software that tweaks one of the rules, you have essentially a new coin like Bcash, Bitcoin Cash, uh, which is a scammy fork of Bitcoin that's been very unsuccessful. And this is fine. You're welcome to run your own software. You're welcome to create your own coin in this way. Uh, but you need to find someone then who wants to buy the new coin from you. You can modify Bitcoin Core. For example, I could create Trader University Bitcoin, and I would basically keep all the same rules. I would just raise the supply cap to 25 million instead of 21 million. I would award myself that extra 4 million, uh, we'll call it TUBTC. And then I can say, everyone, come join me. But anyone who looks at this, who actually looks at the software, would not care. And if I asked you to do something like this, I would be a scammer like someone like Roger Ver, who may not, may not be a scammer. I just believe he's a scammer. So this is what uh, how Bitcoin Core works and how the software works and how the full nodes work. You can either play uh, real chess or the, the standard version of chess, or you can play some version of fairy chess. If you are the US government, uh, you modify Bitcoin Core, maybe you spin up a thousand nodes or a hundred thousand nodes, but who cares? because the existing nodes on the Bitcoin network will not talk to you if you're not following the same rules. So this bad actor, whether it's the US government or the Chinese government or some other some other group, they'll basically, basically be playing checkers or fairy chess while we're playing the basic standard version of chess. If you take a look at this Bitcoin dashboard, you can see here the different versions of Bitcoin Core that are being run by the full nodes. And most of them, uh, or a majority, uh, have upgraded to the latest version of Bitcoin Core, which is Satoshi 0.21.1. We can see 4,800, roughly 4,800 nodes are running this version. You can choose to run an older version of Bitcoin Core. You won't have as much functionality, but you will still, uh, you will still be able to monitor that you own Bitcoin. This new version of Bitcoin Core, uh, 0.21.1, is actually the one that has the Taproot activation code in it, which will include the Schnorr and Taproot protocol upgrades. Very exciting uh, thing. I've done one video, I believe, on Taproot. I definitely need to cover this in future videos. If you want to make sure you're around for that, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.